Welcome to The War from Boise, Idaho. This is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, send it to me at box13 at greatdetectives.net. Well, continuing on our look at uh, programs immediately after the war, we're going to turn to the Eddie Cantor Show, It's Time to Smile, from June the 7th of 1944. This program may be interrupted so that we may bring you the latest war bulletins. Ladies and gentlemen, Bristol Myers, the makers of Ipana for the Smile of Beauty and Sal Hepatica for the Smile of Health, present It's Time to Smile, starring Eddie Cantor. <laughs> Let's sing a song about Susie, pretty little, witty little Susie, with the big brown eyes and the turned up nose and the big blue bow in her hair. Let's sing a song about Susie, haughty little, naughty little Susie, with the dimpled chin and the cutest grin and the darndest innocent stare. Oh, she's as sweet as a bun, and she's second to none. What's more, she's a bundle of joy and a barrel of fun. Let's sing a song about Susie. You gotta go for someone so divine. But if you wanna make love to Susie, no can do, mustn't touch. Uh uh uh, she's mine. If you knew Susie like I know Susie, oh, 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 she's as sweet as a bun, and she's second to none. What's more, she's a bundle of joy and a barrel of fun. Let's sing a song about Susie. You gotta go for someone so divine. But if you wanna make love to Susie, no can do, mustn't touch. Ah, ah, she's mine. Thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight, tonight we are going to announce the name of G.I. Joe and make the $5,000 award. But first, Harry Bonzel, yeah. congratulations on your 39th birthday. Oh, Eddie, no. Come on, gang. What happened to the people we double cross, Harry? <laughs> I didn't forget your birthday, kid. Oh, it's well, it Remember is. when we passed Tiffany's window and you said you liked that gold wristwatch with the alligator strap? No, uh, you got me a gold wristwatch? No, I got you an alligator and a strap. <laughs> Train them to tell time. <laughs> oh, Eddie, I can't... But, but Harry... Harry, let me ask you something. You're getting to be an old guy. Yeah, 39. I feel pretty old sometimes. Tell me, have you ever stopped and looked back over your life? Just think, when you were in grammar school, William Taft was president of the United States. Today, Taft is just a hotel. See? <laughs> yeah, well, think of the changes since you were in grammar school, Eddie. Today, Lincoln is just an automobile. <laughs> In fact, the car I own is a Lincoln, but I'm thinking of changing its name to Roosevelt. Every day I keep wondering if it's going to run. <laughs> and Harry... Yes, Eddie? Harry, never mind the cracks about how old I am. Very few people have the pep I've got at my age. You know that, I huh? know, but at your age, what can you do with pep? <laughs> I see, I get it, I Well, get look, it. tell me this, Eddie. Really, how does a fellow your age get all that vitality? Exercise. Exercise is important, Harry. Mm -hmm. just, just look at yourself. Look, look, look. Why, what's the matter? Well, look at that shape. Look, look, Harry. Well, it's the first time I've ever seen a stomach with a double chin. <laughs> now, wait. Stop this, Eddie. Well, I've, I... this is your birthday, kid. And you know what I'm going to do? What? After the show tonight, I'm throwing a party for you. No, really? But... What is that, Harry? Who, who are these people coming in the studio all of a sudden? Hey, Eddie, look, it's a guide taking a tour through Radio City. Follow me, ladies and gentlemen. Don't shout! <laughs>
Now, just a minute, young fella. What's the idea of barging into the studio? Well, who are you? <laughs> I'm Eddie Cantor. These people out there are here to laugh at me. Oh, you funny you. <laughs> Fine guy. You've only got two people in your whole party. Well, when I started out, I had six, but I lost four coming through a tunnel. Yeah? Who who were the four? Well, there were two blondes, two sailors. Oh, now I get it! <laughs> well, you have no business interrupting my program. I'm going to report you to the head of Radio City. Radio City? Hey, I'm lost! What do you mean? I'm supposed to be showing these people through Chinatown. <laughs> Down. Look, tell him how to get there, Eddie. All right. Go out to the door of Studio 8H, walk toward the west end of the building, take the east elevator to the third floor, turn to the right Not floor... Not so fast! Oh, get out of here! Oh, follow me, ladies and gentlemen. Don't shout! What a pest. Yes. Harry, look, I'm throwing a wonderful party for you in my apartment right after the show, and the celebrities that are going to be there... Celebrity? Betty Grable, Harry James, Grace Moore from the opera. I even called up Zarina, beautiful star of Dream with Music, and I invited her, you know. Zarina, the wonderful ballet dancer? Of course, she oh. never heard of you, so I told her it was a party for me, Eddie Cantor. <laughs> oh, what did she say? Now she wants you to call up and tell her who I am. <laughs> Well, look, Eddie, wouldn't Ida object if you went out with Zarina? Certainly not. In my house, I'm the boss, Harry. I put on my tuxedo, walk into the living room and say, I'm going out tonight, I'm going to have fun, and I'll come home when I feel like it. Jeepers, isn't that dangerous? Yeah, one night Ida came in and caught me saying it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and what happened? It was an old tuxedo anyway. Look, Harry... <laughs> Can you hand me the phone, please, yeah, Harry? Here you are, Eddie. I want to call Pierre, my friend chef, and see how the food for your party is coming along. Hello? Hello? I say, hello, Pierre. How do you do? Why, it's Bert Gordon, the Russian. Russian, tell me, how are things coming along in the kitchen? Simply divine. <laughs> I am making for Mr. Vonzo yes. a special salad, which I am calling Tomato Surprise. Tomato Surprise? Yes, at midnight, the tomato will jump out of the salad and say, Happy birthday. <laughs> Russian, a tomato can't talk. Never met my wife, eh? <laughs> now, Russian, I want this to be a very swanky affair. It will be ultra, ultra. Yeah. <laughs> when dinner is announced, I will wheel in the table and stand at the kitchen door with a tennis racket. Yeah. Wait a minute. What are you doing with a tennis racket? Serving the meatballs. <laughs> Russian, look. We may be a little bit late. Don't let the food get cold. Don't huh? worry. To make sure that the food is very hot, I will serve the whole meal in boiling water. Boiling water, not Berlin. Right now, boiling ain't hot enough. <laughs> Are we having filet mignon? Oui, a oh, oui. <laughs> and steak too. One more thing, Russian. Have you made enough lemon juice for the cocktails? All day long, I've been in the kitchen squeezing and squeezing. Good, good. Is the cook there with you? Who do you think I've been squeezing? Oh, call me back. Everything is going along fine, Harry. And while we're on the subject of food, ladies and gentlemen, we present our own blue plate special, that lovely dish, Nora Martin singing So Little Time. So little time And we've so much to say so little time let's live our dreams today make these moments something to Let's 
drink a toast to it While there's a chance Let's make the most of it Darling, we can make this evening do And by the way, that's a very pretty dress you're going to wear to Harry Von Zell's birthday party. Oh, thank you, Mr. Ken. I'm glad you like it. Gee, I don't know what to give Harry for his birthday. You know, I think I'll just give him a kiss. Now, wait a minute. I don't like kissing in this company. I mean, you see, this isn't that kind of a show, Nora. You've got to be... Oh. I'll tell you what, Nora. Give me the kiss and I'll give it to Harry, all right? <laughs> oh, Harry! Harry Von Zell! Yes, that is. What's the trouble? Nora gave me something to give you for your birthday. Oh! Uh, oh. Here it is. <laughs> <laughs> What's the matter? Doesn't Nora kiss well? Well, Eddie, I'd rather have it direct from the manufacturer without any middleman, if you don't. <laughs> <laughs> but, Harry, at your age, you know your mother doesn't let you go around kissing girls. And after all, mother knows best. Well, maybe you're right. You know, Eddie, mothers usually do know best. In fact, mothers frequently give out some pretty sound advice about taking proper care of teeth and gums. Advice that we all ought to follow. For instance, ladies and gentlemen, a mother might advise her family... Now be sure to visit the dentist regular. Oh, Harry, Harry. Yeah? The big moment is almost here. My birthday party? No, 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 not not yet, not yet, Harry. That's after. Our search for G.I. Joe is over, and in a few minutes we're going to announce the winner. Oh, I'm anxious to find out who gets that $5,000 award, Eddie. Look at all the newspaper men here, and there's a girl reporter. Who's she? Wait a minute, I'll find out. Uh, Miss, Miss, aren't you uh, Dorothy Kilgallen of the New York Evening Journal? No, my name is Michael. Oh, it's Michael! Well, of course. Uh, Moitle, what are you doing here with all these newspaper people? Gee, I can hardly wait to hear who wins the $5,000. I'm so excited. Honestly, I'm sitting on pins and noodles. No, needles, needles. Noodles? No, needles. Noodles don't hurt. Oh, oh, I see. (laughs) Tell me, Moitle, what would you do if you had $5,000? Well, the first thing I'd do when I got up in the morning... Yes? The first thing I'd do when I got up in the morning... Well, come on, come on. Take your time with $5,000. I'm not getting up so early. (laughs) Now, just a minute, Moitle. Would money really change you? Well, with $5,000, I wouldn't be sitting at Ebbets Field throwing pop bottles at the umpire. No? I'd be in there heaving champagne bottles. (laughs) Oh, Oh, good old Ebbets Field. That's where Pepsi-Cola not only hits the spot, but leaves a scar. (laughs) Well, uh, tell us this, Moitle... If you acquired a sudden fortune, would you go to New York City and live on Park Avenue? Oh, no. After living in Brooklyn all my life, I could never live in a city. (laughs) Wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm an old Brooklynite like... What do you mean? Isn't Brooklyn a city? No, ain't you heard? There's a tree growing there. A tree growing there. (laughs) Sit down. Sit down, Myrtle. And now, Harry, I know how much you like jive, so as a special birthday surprise, I've invited the king of boogie-woogie piano players to come to the party and play for you. You have, Eddie? Yes, yeah, he's here in the studio right now, Maurice Rocco. Well. Yeah. 
Uh, Maurice, I, I've seen you play in nightclubs many times, and I noticed that you never use a piano stool. Well, frankly, Mr. Canner, when I was in Hollywood, I owned a piano stool. But I lost it to a fellow club member named Rochester. <laughs> what? How did, you, how did you happen to lose it? Well, Rosh and I were engaged in a friendly little game of African badminton. <laughs> well, uh, African badminton? Say, I... I, Look, I, I wonder, uh, Eddie, what Rochester would want with a piano stool. Well, he has to stand on it to comb Jack Benny's hair, you know. Well, I, well, I don't know Mr. Benny was taller than Rochester. He isn't. He keeps his hair on a high shelf. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, as long as you're standing up, Maurice, how about giving out with a little bit of a... Hey. Follow me, ladies and gentlemen. Don't shout! <laughs> the guide back again. Now, now listen. Will you please get out of here? We're on the air. Well, who are you? I told you before, I'm Eddie Cantor. Oh, you crazy you. <laughs> but I am Eddie Cantor. Listen, if you knew Susie like I know Susie, oh, 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 what a girl. Now, what do you say? If I was Tanner, I'd beat your brains out. <laughs> Listen, potatoes are cheaper, tomatoes are cheaper. Oh, shut up! Why don't you leave me alone? I thought you were looking for Chinatown. Well, I can't find it. I told you before, when you get off the elevator on the third floor, you turn right. Yeah, I think I'm supposed to turn left. No, right. Well, shouldn't I turn left? No, you turn right. Okay, but I'll go through that window again. <laughs> I wish you'd go back to Columbia Pictures, Joe Besser, and be quiet. Look, Maurice Rocco is going to play Ida. from Zarina, and the minute the curtain drops, she's bringing the entire show of Dream with Music over to the party. Oh, boy, a big party. Maybe I'll uh, make a speech or something. You think I'll make a good impression, Eddie? Well, that's the... easy, Harry. The best way to make a good impression is to be yourself. Stick to facts. Well, I, you mean the way I do every week, like this. Ladies and gentlemen, when you wake up feeling this way... Oh, uh, golly, I feel like two cents. And you'd like to come out of it feeling like this. Boy, do I feel like a million. Yes, when you wake up feeling headachy and out of sorts due to the need of a laxative, don't give up and go back to bed. Instead, take a glass of sparkling sal hepatica. Speedy sal hepatica helps you feel better faster by bringing quick, gentle relief, usually within an hour. So don't put off till night taking the laxative you need in the morning. Don't risk feeling miserable all day. Take Sal Hepatica when you need it at once. And remember, sparkling Sal Hepatica has this additional advantage. This famous saline helps sweeten an upset stomach by helping to reduce excess gastric acidity. So tonight, or tomorrow morning, get a bottle of Sal Hepatica from your druggist. Remembering this caution, use only as directed. Then whenever you need a laxative, morning, noon, or night, see how much faster you feel better 
when you take gentle, speedy Sal Hepatica. Harry, I've been thinking about your birthday party. Wouldn't it be great if all the people who... Hello, kids there. How are you getting on with the party? I'll find out. How are you, my Bublitzka? Bublitzka yourself. My name is Moidle. Russian, will you get her off your lap? Mm, television. <laughs> Don't remind... I want to know... I want to know, is everything ready for the party? Yes, but there's one thing missing. I got thirsty and drank the bottle of ginger ale on the kitchen shelf. On the kitchen shelf? Russian, you fool, that wasn't ginger ale. That was a bottle of bourbon you drank. <laughs> I was so disappointed. <laughs> So you drank the bourbon. I hope you didn't touch that bottle of scotch in the dining room. Believe me. Believe me. I didn't go near that delicious scotch. If you didn't go near it, how do you know the scotch was delicious? Long straw. <laughs> I suppose you've been so busy celebrating, you didn't even get the food prepared. That don't serve. Everything is ready. Each one of my hamburgers is stuffed with tender strips of wood. Wood? Wood in hamburgers? Yes, it is one of my greatest ideas. Yeah? You see, when you bite into a hamburger and say to yourself, gee, I wish I had a toothpick, well, you got it. <laughs> Look at the, ha the hamburgers I'm not worrying about. Do you know how to prepare the turkey? Indeed, I do. Indeed, I do. I, I do, do indeed. Indeed, 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 I do indeed. I will put the turkey in the oven, then I will leave the gas turned on, for one hour before lighting it. Wait, why do you leave the gas on without lighting it? Why I got to kill the turkey? <laughs> Will you forget about the turkey? How is Mr. Von Zell's birthday cake coming along? How's it Simply cake? the one. Yeah? It's the biggest cake you ever saw. 38 layers, what? 40 feet high, and 50 feet round. Russian, that's ridiculous. Why, a cake that size would be big enough for a man to stand in. Where do you think I'm calling from? Oh, get out of here. Tonight, ladies and gentlemen, we bring to a close our worldwide search for G.I. Joe, America's fighting man who is most representative of his brothers in arms. In just a moment, we will announce his name. But first... Let me repeat what we said on a Wednesday night three months ago when our search for G.I. Joe began. It was our plan then. It is our fervent hope now that what we instituted would be no contest but a design for the future welfare of our returning sons, husbands, brothers, and friends. We said then that men of great and noble minds were looking forward to a post-war world that would ensure the livelihood and well-being of those who have fought for America's way of life. We say now, this is but a just and wise debt we must acknowledge and repay. The man who has been chosen as G.I. Joe is a symbol of the man each and every one of you named and described in the letters which went to our judges, Warren H. Atherton, National Commander of the American Legion, and Sergeant Alvin C. York, famed hero of World War I. The judges have made their decision. This is the G.I. Joe who has been chosen as America's typical fighting man. Private Charles William Pierce, Jr., serving in the armed forces overseas. His home address, Rural Route 3, Valley Station, Kentucky. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I want to bring to the microphone two of the three people who in all this world are nearest and dearest to the heart of private peers. First, I'd like you to meet his father. Mr. Cantor, my son is one of six brothers and two sisters. But tonight he has become a member of the largest family on this continent. The family of Americans, who since 17 and 76 have stood for freedom, tolerance, and goodwill. My son's mother is gone, but I know that wherever she is, she will share my joy in the knowledge that America will never forget the sons of every mother in this nation. Now, I want...
want you to meet the second of those three who are always in private Pierre's thoughts, his charming wife, Iris. Through you, Mr. Canner, Charles and I will realize a great dream. One day soon, I pray, we will buy a farm and build a home for our family where we can live again in peace. But always with Mr. Canner, we will know this that my husband is but one of ten million entitled to this award, and I accept it for him in all humility, in the name of every woman whose loved one is away from home tonight. I, I spoke of three people. The third, I regret, cannot come to the microphone at this time. For this very moment, she is sleeping in her little bed at her temporary home in New York, the beautiful eight-month-old daughter whom Private Charles William Pierce, Jr. has never seen. For her future security, for the future security and peace of all children all over the world, now at the very moment when the liberating Allied armies of invasion strike at the heart of persecution, we place this $5,000 award in your hands, Mrs. Charles William Pierce, Jr., to be kept in trust toward that day when G.I. Joe returns and all of you can start life anew together in a world of peace on earth and goodwill toward man. That will do it for today. If you uh, have a comment, email me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. I welcome your story or that of loved ones who served during World War II. Ken Curlin provides our opening theme music, kencurlin.com. I am your host, Adam Graham. This uh, series is provided as a service of the great detectives of old-time radio, greatdetectives.net.